Welcome back everybody. Today I'm back with the Ninja Thirsty. It's a drink system that allows you to make custom made carbonated drinks with the press of a button. But does it work and is it worth a $108 price tag? Let's find out in today's review, starting with the unboxing. All right, it's a big box here. Let's open it up and see what's inside. Quick start guide to start off, that's nice. A starter eight pack, a rather heavy CO2 canister, piece of cardboard. Here's a canister that says keep me cold on the top. There's an empty box, nothing in there. It even says there's no, uh, nothing inside, empty. All right, here's the unit itself. So we got the unit, the quick start guide, CO2 canister, starter eight pack. Now I paid $179.99 for this. The claims are they say it's a one of a kind drink machine. They say it allows you to create almost any drink you can think of. It uses flavored water drops that are either sweetened or unsweetened. The drinks can be carbonated or non-carbonated. There's four levels from no carbonation up to high fizz. They say you can combine any two drinks and create drinks from six to 24 ounces. Each one of these proprietary CO2 canisters costs uh, somewhere between 30 and $35 and makes about a hundred drinks. I look for pros and cons online. I didn't really see much as far as reviews go, except for on the Ninja site. And I take those as a grain of salt. So I guess I'm kind of on my own with this one. I'm going to read over these instructions and then we're going to get started. All right, it's unboxed, it's cleaned off. I ran through a rinse cycle that only took about a minute. The first thing you're supposed to do was install the CO2 canister. That's just a matter of pulling the black cap off, open the door, pulling the collar out, twist it in place, very simple. Next up was to put the water reservoir on the dock. That was just a matter of filling with ice and water and putting it on there. Now we're on to step three of the setup, which is the flavored drops. Now they've got quite a few categories of these drops here. They got splash, hydrate, vitamins, energy. Splash is the non-sweetened one. The rest of them are sweetened. Kind of reminds me of the circle. They've got their, their different categories of what they call sips. It reminds me a lot of those. But I put two of the flavored drops in here. I put the energy peach mango and the splash tart lemon here. So then what you're supposed to do is, is there's just three steps to choosing the drink you wanna make. Number one is to choose a fizz level. You can go from no fizz to three levels of fizz, so four total. Then you select your size, six, 12, 18, or 24 ounces. Six ounces can't combine flavors and it always dispenses in six ounce bursts. Last thing to do is to adjust your flavor. You, right here, you can adjust the strength of either one of these. You can go zero, one, or two. For either one, you can mix and match however you want. You can go strong on one, light on the other. So then that's pretty much it. At the, at the next page, that's troubleshooting. So they're pretty much done. So my first test, I'm just gonna do one flavor of six ounces, just see how it goes. They even have a tray here for smaller cups. I'm gonna put a glass right there. Later on, I'll make bigger amounts and I'll add some ice. I just wanna see how it looks first time. Choosing a fizz level. I think I'm gonna go on the low end of fizz here. Level one, low fizz. Select a size, we're gonna go, where is the size? I go over here. We're going six ounces. Flavor strength, we're going regular on just the peach mango and we're leaving the lemon tart off for this particular test. Then we press start and we should have a nice fizzy drink. Here we go. And I'm having memories of the Bartesian here, which was an alcoholic kind of version of this. Ooh, I just heard some CO2 unloading in there. Oh, here we go, here we go. Well, we got the it started off with just water. Now we got flavor coming in here. It's very fizzy. The tone that lets you know when it's done is the exact same tone they use for the Ninja Foodie oven. Because I use that all the time, I recognize it. It looks pretty nondescript. Let's uh, give it a shot. There we go. Oh, it, ta it tastes pretty good. The amount of fizz isn't really that bad. I can't imagine going a lot fizzier than that. If that's the low fizz, I can only imagine what the high fizz is gonna be, which I'm gonna try pretty soon. And it came out pretty good. Creating a one flavor drink is, is cool, but not that impressive. Let's try a multi-flavor drink here. I'm gonna put a beer glass with some ice down here. All right, I'm gonna try the bold strength for the peach mango and regular strength for the tart lemon, which is a nice combo here. And I'm gonna go 12 ounces and I'm bumping up the fizz level to number two. This is what they call medium fizz. So here we go. This should be a very different drink. Let's see, start. And you can see the water going down here pretty quickly. There it goes. First it starts with just water and then it seems to kick over to the flavor. That looks pretty fizzy. That looks, that looks a lot fizzier than the first one. And the first one tasted fine. Round two now. I hope my glass isn't too small. All 
All right, this one came out in two diff different dispensing cycles, but it looks almost like I need to stir it. Let's taste it first. Oh, wow, that first taste was nothing but carbonated water. I gotta stir this. Very fizzy, very fizzy. That's already quite, and that's not even the highest level fizz yet. Here we go. Hmm. All right, so this one is much different than the first one. This one seems maybe a little bit weaker even, even though the first one was supposed to be less bold, but that one didn't have any ice and it wasn't mixing through flavors and it was only six ounces. But with that said, it is pretty good. I'm not sure the lemon really cuts through as much, but let me keep going. I'm gonna make some more drinks and see what we got. One thing I haven't done yet is try to remove one of these cartridges. Let's, let's try that. I think you should be able to pull it out. Oh yeah, it comes off easy. Fortunately, that wasn't too hard. Let's try a different one, put it in there. I'm gonna try the, uh, the watermelon for this one. Pull it back. It only goes in one way, which is good. Snap it into place, close it up. It's pretty simple to replace though, so that's a good thing. In fact, I'm gonna take the lemon out too. I'm gonna put a different one in there as well. I'm gonna try their kiwi strawberry. I'm gonna have two hydrates in there and see what happens. These are easy to install, but this, this packaging can sometimes be a little bit of a problem. There we go. Pull it back, stick it in there, snap it in place, close it, locked and loaded. All right, I'm gonna put a glass here. I'm gonna try 12 ounces of the watermelon on the highest bold level and the highest fizz level and see what happens. Okay, so we're going high bold. That one's going off for right now. Size 12 ounces and we're going highest fizz. The second one was pretty fizzy. I can't even imagine how high the highest fizz is gonna be, but I'll find out in just a second. And start. I'm really curious about this fizz level. It makes some interesting sounds before it actually starts dispensing. Very fizzy, look at that. Now that's the first one. Now we have more coming out of here. Is this glass too small? I don't know. I think this glass might not be big enough. I guess I'll find out in a second. Is it gonna overflow? Hopefully not, it's gonna be close. Oh, is that gonna be close? Is it gonna overflow? No! Oh, <laughs> right. Okay, maybe I should have a bigger glass next time. It's all the way to the top. It's all the way to the top, but I made it. I'm gonna take a sip of this. Even though it's supposed to be watermelon lime, it kind of reminds me of strawberry soda I used to drink when I was a kid. It's very fizzy, but it's very good. I think the fizz level is almost too high for me, and I like fizzy drinks, but this is very fizzy. I'm gonna try another drink here. I think I'm gonna stick with a low fizz level. Even though I thought I liked fizzy drinks, I guess maybe I don't like them as fizzy as I thought I did. But I'm gonna try going the highest bold flavor on both of these and see what happens. Also looks like we're getting a little bit low in the water. I think I might, might have one more drinks worth here. Let's see. So I got lowest fizz level, 12 ounces, both of them maxed out on the boldness. Here we go. All right, looks like water comes out first, then the flavor. Dang, I thought this was a bigger glass, so this is gonna be kind of full too. <laughs> Once again, we'll see if it overflows my glass. I thought my glasses were big enough. Oh, it's gonna be close. Oh, it's gonna be close. You can stop right now. Oh, it did. Wow, I got lucky both times. Look how close that is to the top. And you can tell that it's mostly water on the top, but I have to stir this. Fortunately, if it had overflowed, there is a drip tray down here, so it wouldn't go over the counter. So they did account for that, because I guess you don't always know how big of a glass to use. I may have put too much ice in there too. Personal opinion, everybody's gonna have a different idea, but to me, the low fizz level is perfect. I mix kind of two similar flavors. I got a watermelon lime, strawberry kiwi, just a very berry tasting drink, but it's very good. So I got three 12 ounce drinks and one six ounce drink on one fill up and it is now empty. So it's time to refill that. Doesn't seem too bad, really. It seems very simple. I thought it was gonna be more elaborate than, than it is. It really isn't. The flavors are easy to put in there and take out whenever you need to. And they do close back up for easy storage. They say the CO2 canister will last about 100 drinks. So that means I have about 96 more to go, which really isn't that bad. So I've got, uh, I've got a few drinks here. I gotta drink while I ponder the pros and cons of the Ninja Thirsty. 
So I just sat down and wrote down my list of pros and cons, but before I get to that, I have one more very quick test I want to try out. Now I had mentioned that I got this starter pack with the, with the Ninja Thirsty, but I also bought a whole bunch of other, other flavors as well. And one of those flavors is the Coconut Pineapple. Now my current favorite sparkling drink is the Pineapple Coconut by Zoa. Now these aren't very cheap, but I do like them quite a bit. I'm just wondering how much the Coconut Pineapple can compare to the Pineapple Coconut. I'm gonna pour the, uh, the Zoa into a glass and see how the fizz level looks. Now that looks like kind of a maybe, a maybe a medium fizz level compared to what I made earlier. I refilled the container full of water here. Let me just replace this with the coconut pineapple. All right, so I set it for the regular boldness, six ounces, the medium fizz. I think we're good to go. Pull the tray down here, put a glass there. Let's get started. Here we go. So this is the Ninja Thirsty Coconut Pineapple, and this is the Zoa Pineapple Coconut. Let's see how they compare. Zoa first. Now on the Zoa, the pineapple comes out most, the coconut's kind of in the background, and it's kind of a moderate fizz level. Ninja Thirsty. I would say it's the opposite. The coconut comes through most, and the pineapple's in the background, and maybe the fizz level's a little bit too high. I mean, it should've just gone with the low fizz level. Let me go back and forth. All right, so maybe that wasn't an exact replacement, but it was pretty good. I could probably drink the Thirsty almost as much as I could drink the Zoa, so I think they're on the same level. Before my pros and cons, also I want to talk a little bit about the cost of these. How much it costs you is going to depend on the boldness level and the fizz level that you use. It'll also depend on if you buy one canister of CO2 at a time or multiple or join the refill club. To generalize though, one of these makes about 20 12 ounce drinks. At seven bucks a piece, that's approximately 35 cents per drink for just the drops. The CO2 canister is about 30 to 35 dollars. It makes about 100 drinks, so also around 30 to 35 cents a piece for that. So when you count the CO2 canister and the drops, it's about 65 to 70 cents per drink with just those, not including the cost of the unit itself. So let's take a look at the pros and cons. Now the pros would be that it's very simple to use and the drinks are all quite good. Everything I tried, I liked. I believe that that alone is probably a compelling enough reason to justify buying this for people that don't mind spending 180 bucks on the unit. I also like how customizable they are when you consider that you can have two flavor pods at a time, four levels of fizz, two levels of boldness. That's a lot of combinations. But now it's time for a few cons. And there aren't that many, but I would say the first con that came to mind is that you really can't just leave it out for instant use because the water has to be pretty cold, maybe even ice cold. And although the individual drinks are pretty cheap, the unit itself is 180 bucks, which could be prohibitive for some people. You also have to always make sure you're stocked up on the CO2 canisters. If you don't have one of those, and you really can't make any carbonated drinks. Now I'm a fan of Ninja products. I like the foodie oven. I like the foodie grill. I like the Ninja creamy. And now I have the Ninja thirsty, which I do think that I'm a fan of. Those who don't mind the price, I think will find a solid offering with effective results. If you've tried this, tell me what you think in the comments below. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time. There's a canister that says keep...